Hey, shalom everyone. This is Dr. Durr. I'd like to welcome you back to the Wake Up Yasharel channel. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to each and every one of you. Much love from my family and I to all of you. We love you all. I want to say all praises to the Most High Yahuwah. I am he who breathes life. Behold the nail hands. His son Yahushua Yahuwah is salvation. The Ruach Hakadesh, the set apart spirit. The comforter, the one who leads us into all truth. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Praying that you will be obedient and that you will accomplish all that the Most High Yahuwah has given you to do. Uh, let us pray. Yahuwah, my prayer and desire is to speak with compassion, power, authority, clarity, conviction, confidence, and being convincing to the hearts, the mind, and soul of your people. And also, Yahuwah, the sojourners all over this world that are going along with us. All I ask, Yahuwah, is that you anoint this vessel of clay from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name we pray, hallelujah, so be it. This is a very powerful lesson, a lesson that I pray that you will listen to until the end or listen to as much as you can from the beginning and come back and revisit the lesson again because it's something that many of us don't know about Hollywood. The word Hollywood is the word used to make Druid magic wands. It's about casting spells over the people through the music industry, television, and movie industry to get people tricked and trapped. Also during sporting events and any type of entertainment type venue. So we are in a major warfare and we are fought on every side. Even the news are part of pushing the agenda of keeping all of us under the spell are in a matrix where we can't see the truth that's really out there. Only thing we believe is the lies that have been told us and blindly walk in those things because of the trickery of the magic one and those that are casting the spell. Now, I want to ask you this question. Now, I just said what I just said, but do you really think there's spells being cast in movies. You got a lot of these movies that are coming out, these newer movies where they are actually casting spells in the movies. They don't tell you that, but they're doing it. That's why you have to be careful what you set before yourself. Family, I'm not telling you what movies to watch, but you be very careful of what you put before your eyes. Let the Most High Yahuwah word bring conviction to your soul. Now I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms 101, starting at the first verse. Dealing with King David, uh, the one we call David, starting at the first verse, and it reads, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Yahuwah, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when will thou come unto me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. In his own house, he said, I'm going to walk with a perfect heart. Even if everyone is not watching, he said, because I love y'all that much. I'm going to walk before him in a perfect, with a perfect heart, even when I'm in the comfort of my own home. Listen at the third verse. This is the key verse. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside, cause those to leave y'all, cause us to backslide. I, won't, I, don't, I hate that work. The things they're trying to do to trick us. It shall not cleave to me. What King David would say, he said, I will set no wicked thing for my eyes. I will not allow the wicked to trick me. I hate how they're tricking people that don't see. They're blinded by the onslaught of the media entertainment industry. And it's coming at people hard and heavy. And it's so strong. The delusion is so strong that when you try to wake people out of their sleep and out of their slumber, they will attack you instead of attacking the people that did the damage to him. So King David said, no, I don't want to set anything before my eyes is wicked. I hate the work of them that cause people to turn away from the Most High. He said, it will not cleave unto me. Now we're going to do a few readings here from some memes. It says, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. That's where we are as Hebrew Israelites. We don't have a lot of knowledge about ourselves. Our past history has been erased, origin and our culture. But guess what? Yah has awakened a lot of us, and we're starting to put out the information, teach the information, 
share the information on the social media platforms. And Yah is bringing us back to who we are so we can walk in who we are as Yah's special people. Saints, the brainwashing is real. Let me read this meme. To control a people, you must first control what they think about themselves, how they regard their history and culture. And when your conqueror makes you ashamed of your culture and your history, he needs no prison walls and no chains to hold you. I know that to be true. I know it to be a fact. And that's why I'm Everything that's going on in the world today is because of us, the Hebrew Israelites, they're trying to keep the information about us hidden, hid from the whole world because the majority of the world leaders know who we are. And they are trying to hide this information from the masses of people so they do anything they can to keep us entertained, brainwashed, tricked, and duped to keep us up on end with a bunch of fear that keep us on edge all the time. Because they're trying to hide the information about the true Hebrew Israelites uh, that's around the world that's been spread out because of the transatlantic slave trade. As I just stated a few minutes ago, it's about the house of Shem. It's about the Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew Israelites are Negroes. There are no Europeans. There are no Chinese, Japanese, or African all Negroes, Hebrew Israelites. That's why I stated earlier, all the programming, all the manipulation, all of the schemes and the tactics, all are pointed towards the Hebrew Israelites. Look at us. They throw us in jail. They kill us on a daily. They, they keep us down. They keep us low. It's about mass deception. Yes, the other nations that are uh, part of this uh, earthly walk, they're going to face some things too, but not at the level that we're facing things. Why? Because we are y'all's chosen people. And they know it, and they're trying to keep us hidden from the world. Because once the mass of people, or once the, a lot of these people find out that we're the Hebrew Israelites, because many people don't know. Now, the world leaders know, but many of the people out here don't know. Once they find out, it's going to be people going crazy. They're going to say, we've been killing the children of Israel, the real children. You've been fooling us. You got... People over there that's imposters in their place, they calling themselves Hebrew, but they're not Hebrews. Hallelujah. So you, you have to understand, it's mass deception going on. This is why they have that magic wand. These people came up with a scheme and with a plan way back in the day, and they walked this plan and agenda out. I got some memes I want to show you that talks about how they got this agenda is being walked out. You're going to see it. It was done like in 1913. In the 1920s, they were, they were pushing this agenda. And you're going to see this meme that they wrote. You're going to see today that what this man said back in the old days is manifesting now. That's what I'm telling you. This fight is real. How did we, the Hebrew Israelites, get in this place? Because our ancestors chose to forfeit walking with Yah in order to live like the heathens. We ended up being scattered worldwide into slavery. We, we disobeyed the commandments, his laws, his precepts, his judgments, his statutes, and his feast days to choose the way of the heathen and their wicked deeds. And so Yah had had enough of us, and he scattered us and put us into punishment over 400 years. We've been facing stuff. The 400 years of slavery that he pronounced over us is done. We're in the last phase of Jacob's trouble, and it's over. The cup is passing towards the heathens now. It's called the cup of trembling. That which was on us is now passing to them. You can see it. That's why I have to go through this today to let you know that Hollywood One has touched many areas. It's not just, listen, y'all, it's not just, in, as I stated, movies and, and entertainment. It is, but it's also in the religious arena. Are you hearing me? In the job sector, in the colleges, it's all over the place. This one, this magic spell, these tricks, these heathens did, they did it to trick us as y'all's people to keep us hidden so others won't know who we are. But we are going to expose the rest of it today. Stay tuned. So if the truth makes you uncomfortable, don't blame the truth. Blame the lie that made you uncomfortable. Read 2 Thessalonians 2. 11 and 12. Now you're about to see where Christianity came from. I'm telling you, all this stuff was a plot, a plan, a scheme. The magic wand is everywhere. The Council of Nicaea created the name Jesus Christ, created Christianity. See for yourself. 
Christianity, uh, they added it in our book, what they call the Bible, which is a set of our scriptures, the Brit Hadashah, which is the new renewed covenant, and the Tanakh, and the Torah, which is what they call the Old Testament. They took our book, superimposed themselves in our book, took over our book, and made everybody think it was about them. They even came with all came up with all the man-made religions. You got Constantine, uh, introduced paganism, the doctrine, the Trinity, Easter, Lent, Sun worship, uh, Sunday worship, Christian uh, cross, the Christian fish, Christianity, that's the happened at the first council of Nicaea. Look at the trickery. Christianity has nothing to do with a Hebrew book. This is not a Christian book. This is a Hebrew record book, a history book. Matter of fact, you remember the scripture that says, my people which are called by my name, here's a slave manifest to show you at the end of each one of those Hebrew names, you see the name Yah. They telling you is people always had his name in their name. I'm going to show you another little meme here. It's going to go on to show you more about them having his name at the end. Now, why did they, why is this important? Remember, they took our name out and gave us their European names. Why? To hide the fact that we were y'all's people. You see how that magic spell is everywhere? That hex, that spell to keep you tricked. That's why they gave you names like Joe Smith, James Durr, John uh, Willis. It's all the names that's European. They, they want you to know your identity. It goes deeper. They even went inside the set up our scripture and changed the look of the Mashiach when it gave you a vivid description on who he was. I don't believe in graven images. Both of these descriptions of uh, pictures are wrong. They're graven images. I don't worship images. I'm just using a pictorial description to show you which one matched the scripture close. Let's look at Revelations 1, verse 14 through 15. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, as if they burn in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Which of these images fit the description. Why the deception of knowing who the Mashiach is? Why put in a European person when you know the Hebrew Messiah was a Negro? Why such mass deception? Because they had a plan. They had a scheme. They want to rule and run the whole world. It's the Roman Empire in disguise. Here's a meme here to show you how bad the brainwashing was. It even hit over into the Ebony Magazine. The Ebony Magazine almost was wiped out because of the picture of they had the black the Christ, per se. That's what they had on their magazine. And people went crazy. The black folks went crazy and started sending in pictures of the white European uh, Jesus Christ character instead of the Hebrew, per se, picture that was on the Ebony Magazine, which was closely uh, was a close depiction of what the actual Mashiach looked like. It wasn't him. The picture is not him. It was a close, closer depiction than the European character, and black folks almost lost their mind. That shows you the brainwashing is deep. Okay, so when Yahuwah finally wakes one up into the knowledge of who they are, look at what happened when you begin to awaken. Layers will be shed. You may experience rage, depression, anxiety, fear, etc. Ride the waves. Allow these things to exit your system because your illusion Self-ego is being shed so your true self spirit can strive, embrace the transition. I'm telling y'all, it's like that. It, most of us that have gone through the awakening process, we all had the same awakening experience. Also remember, if y'all wakes you up, don't you bring Christianity with you. You got to leave that back there and buried. Get rid of it. Burn it up. Throw it away. He said, come out of her, my people. That's what he's talking about, Christianity. Get out of her because it's a trick. It's of the Roman Catholic Empire, the Roman Catholic Church. It was a trick. They tricked people into thinking that the so-called set-apart scriptures is their book and is not. It's a Hebrew-Israelite record book, historical data book. It's our book because we're the Hebrew-Israelites. All right, you see the spells are still going. This is what Barbara Hillary said. Christianity is the greatest shackle, the greater rape of the black mind than slavery ever was. What a deep statement. Until we come into the knowledge of what that doctor or that professor just said, we're going to stay stuck in Christianity, which they want you to do anyway. Never find out your identity. You'll stay lost and stay tied up into religion instead of a relationship with y'all. 
These jokers are so wicked and so devious. Look what they did. They even changed the Mashiach's name. They changed it from Yahusha to Jesus. Watch this. In Hebrew, Jesus have no meaning. Yahusha in Hebrew, Yahusha. In Greek, Jesus means Isus. And Yahusha in Greek means Yahusha. In Latin, uh, Isus uh, is for Jesus. In Latin, Yahusha. In English, is Jesus. In English, is Yahusha. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. They changed his name. They took out his name. I hope you still follow me that you know, they got that spell going on. We have broken off the ones that y'all has awakened. But a majority of the people are still up under that spell. You tell them that his name ain't Jesus, they will go off of you, cuss you out, say you're in a cult, say you don't, you walking in wickedness. They will say everything. And we have documented proof, like this meme here, shows you how his name was mentioned over 216 times, Yahushua, throughout the set up our scripture. And it shows you other uh, representation of the name that was in there as well. But the Yahushua is the actual name. And it tells you how the father's name was taken out over 6,823 times in order to hide his identity, and it is his book. These jokers are sick. So what made people still fight to stay in something that they see in all this truth out here, they see in all this insight, Yah's trying to wake them up. What made them stay there? Well, here's one we got from France Phenon, one of the professor, a doctor, he wrote, sometimes people hold a core belief that is very strong. When they are presented with evidence that works against that belief, a new evidence cannot be accepted. It would create a feeling that is extremely uncomfortable called cognitive dissonance. And because it is so important to protect the core belief, they will rationalize, ignore, and even deny anything that doesn't fit in it with the core belief. Brainwashing is real. This is why they send missionaries out all over the world to get the children first. They had a lot of children on the slave ships so they can indoctrinate the children because they're, they're very impressionable. But let me show you how this brainwashing and this magic wand stuff is still going on. You see this meme here? You got Samaritus or Istar dealing with Easter. You got Nimrod. That's Nimrod's mother. He married his mother and they had a child by the name of Tammuz. She's also the moon goddess of ancient Babylon and the wife of Nimrod. This Tammuz was born on December the 25th. Sound familiar, don't it? Sun God. What has the entire world done? They have succumbed to Nimrod worship. He is the author of many of the religions that are out there in the earth. It was based on him because he was a mighty hunter, a mighty warrior. He was a powerful person. The entire earth is lying in the power of ancient Babylon and the spell cast by Nimrod and his mother. That thing you see down at the bottom called Tammuz, they put that T on their head. The Catholic Church, you see people putting them ashes on their head. That T is representing Tammuz. They got Lent week going on. When Mashiach was born, shepherds came by. They were told to go by to see the baby in the manger. The angels had gave them a word to go, and they went and they saw exactly what was spoken. But when you see these nativity scenes out here during these holiday seasons, these pagan holiday seasons, it's not the actual Mashiach that they're worshiping is that Tammuz baby because remember they always show you the three wise men per se coming to visit the baby in that manger no when those wise men finally showed up the Mashiach was about two years old so they didn't come when he was a baby so that story is all off and it's twisted that's why you need to study to show thyself approved so that was really it's a they they twisting the story to get you thinking it's about the Mashiach, but really it's about Tammuz. They got you worshiping Tammuz on that day. They made their own story up to get us tricked. Saints, you see, Yah tells us that he hates the congregation of evildoers. He said he would not sit with the wicked. He said he don't dwell in houses made with hands. What do we do? We build these elaborate temples thinking that Yah is going to be with us. He's not there. He's in our hearts. Uh, they even took out his name and the author of his own book and gave us the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, uh, substituted for the Most High Yahuwah's name over 6,823 times, took his name out of his book because they didn't want you to identify. They gave us the word God, which is a Babylon deity of fortune. That's why you see on the back of the money, in God we trust, in money we trust. It's dealing with the God of fortune. It's not dealing with uh, the one they try to get us to say God. No, his name is not God. His name is Yahuwah, Yah, Elohim. So you're fighting for gold, oil, and drugs. That God, that's the God they're talking about. These people are trick, trick you up, man. They Really, in all actuality, as I stated a few weeks ago, they got you in Baal worship. You think you're serving the most High when you say Lord. No, 
is the Lord Baal, the Lord God, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jehovah, the Lord Allah, the Lord Krishna, Baal, Beelzebub, uh, Satan is the Lord Baal. You, got, you go to the book of Jeremiah 23, you go to the book of Hosea 2, and you can read these scriptures here that tells you that all this time we've been calling on the name of Baal when they substituted the Most High's name with Lord. Why would they do that? If he has a name, why be scared to put his name in his own book? Because they were doing some tricky stuff to trick us as Israelites in slavery. That's why they didn't want us to read the Bible. They especially didn't want us to read the old uh, books because we would have really have known. That's why they hid it from us because we just saw his name. We just knew that was our uh, Savior and that was our King, Yahuwah. They didn't want you to know that. Check this out when you get a chance. Pretty much all religions deal with Baal worship. You see, Baal worship deals with Baphomet, the transgender god of bisexuality. So, it's deep, people. It's deep. You see uh, Baal and that Jesus character is the same person. They're trying to fool you with that. Look on the Catholic uh, priest stick. Got the same emblem as Baal. And all this stuff started way back uh, because of Deuteronomy 28 chapter. I know we read 1 through 14, the promises and the blessings, but when you read Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, it talks about us as Hebrew Israelites, how Yah allowed us to be cursed because of our wicked ways. We wanted to run from him. You read that on your own, you get a chance. But that's how all this stuff started. We got indoctrinated. It got beaten to us. We, uh, we got messed up really bad. That's when Yah uh, began the awakening process. He handpicks us from these people and get us away from them. He takes us out of the world and put us into him. He chose us to get out of Babylon. I give him praise for that. I also want to mention that there's no letter J in Hebrew. So the Mashiach's name could not be Jesus. His name is Yahusha. He was back there 2,000 years ago. That name, that letter J only came out about 600 years ago. So you got to be careful calling the Mashiach a name that's not even his name. All right, most Christians don't know this. In the entire first Christian century, Jesus is not mentioned by a single Greek or Roman historian. Religious scholar, politician, philosopher, or poet. His name never occurred in a single inscription. And it is never found in a single piece of private correspondence. Zero zip references. Remember, scholars agree, private names do not translate. This is who you worship. And even Satan changed himself to look like an angel of light. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. That's that Jesus character. Now let me tell you who else this Lucifer is, and this Jesus character is, the Statue of Liberty. Look at the Statue of Liberty. Lucifer literally means light bearer, angel of light. In Latin, the Statue of Liberty is Lucifer. Look look at him. He looks like a man or a woman. You can't tell who he is. Hallelujah. It's there. They're putting this stuff out right in front of your face. We're still in it. We're still on it, y'all. Now, that's, I took you down the rabbit hole dealing with religion, dealing with us as Hebrew Israelites. Now, let's go back to this more of this Hollywood. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yah, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. That's why you have to be careful what you watch. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience has been fulfilled. Listen, when it's talking about casting down imagination and every hot thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yah, that means everything that's out there that's saying stuff opposing the set apart scripture. Every movie, every book, they're opposing the scripture. Every magazine, uh, every person that's on the stage, every singer, every uh, commentator, every news person, whoever they may be, casting this magic wand and opposing the knowledge of Yah you got to bring it into captivity, every one of those thoughts, to the obedience of Hamashiach and say, no, that's not right, that's out of order, it's not of Yah. Pretty much every movie now, you have to fast forward these movies if you're going to watch them. Because there's a lot of things in there that oppose Yah. Pretty much, the movie be pretty much uh, gone by the time you get finished erasing everything that you don't, you can't see. So I'm telling you now, you have to be very careful uh, about this agenda these people got going on. This agenda is deep. I took you down the rabbit hole. Now let's go down a little deeper into the rabbit hole. Remember I stated at the very beginning, a witch's magic wand is actually made out of Hollywood, the name of a tree. And the wand are used to do what? 
cast spells. Therefore, the name Hollywood was named on purpose. Matthew 23, 25 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. You got to clean the inside of a vessel first, then the outside will be clean as well. 27, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, or hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outside, but are within full of dead men's bones, and are all uncleanness. 28 verse, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. What is a hypocrite or hypocrite? Well, the one answer that many are uh, going to be blown away with is hypocrite or hypocrite is an actor, a stage player, a dissembler, pretender, a hypocrite. Someone putting on a show, want someone to draw you in, pull you in, make you believe something because of the way they acted or carried out that play or that scene before you. So I'm telling you, many people you think in Hollywood are so-called good people. They are play actors. They are stage actors. They put on shows all the time. You think you're getting the real person, the real uh, individual. You think you know them because you've seen them on four movies. No, you don't know these people. You don't understand these people. To my, oh, I love you. No, you don't. You don't even know them. You don't even understand what these people stand for. Most of these people are satanic. Luciferians have sold their souls for the gold and for the green. They hate mankind. Are you hearing me? They can't stand you. You think they like you, think they love you. No, that's why all of the movies has an agenda. Every movie from the way back then up until now, there has been agendas being played out in movies. They say something in movies, then the next year they'll say something else. Next thing you see something else, you see all this stuff manifesting out in the opening because of what these people that are hypocrites, play actors, people that on the stage are carrying out and getting you to believe. They manifest it on the news. They manifest it in sports. They get you liking certain things in commercials. That's why they call it television programming, getting you programmed to believe what they put out. You can see it uh, with different agendas, uh, especially when it comes down to interracial relationships. You see it. I mean, it's at an all-time high. They're pushing it. But you're going to understand in a few minutes when I read this meme that that was a part of the agenda back in 1912. I said 13, but it's 1912 when they came up with uh, interracial relationship was going to start taking place at a certain time during their agenda. And it was going to be exactly what they want everything to be. I'm telling y'all, these people have been casting spells forever and they still doing it. Look at the blindness of the people. They can't see a thing. We're trying to wake people up and they think we off and we showing them line up on line, precept on precept, and they going crazy. Listen at this. The magic wand, besides the blatant perversion displayed in many films, all Hollywood films, have the same source. They come from a movie system called Hollywood. Hollywood is a substance used by the Druid of ancient England. Ancient Druids are like uh, witches and warlocks, cut branches from the holly tree, which they fashioned into the magic wand used for casting spells. This spell casting with magic wands continues to this day in the form of Hollywood movies, as well as in its original form as a wand. It can be proven that nearly all Hollywood movies have subliminal messages, I just stated that, occulted references, and hidden messianic and illuminati symbolism throughout. Squares and compasses symbol, all seeing eye, the number 33, the number 666 pentagrams, upside down five-pointed stars, Satanic symbols, satanic as above, so below symbols. Other symbols occur in numerous scenes throughout most Hollywood movies and TV shows. Some are blatant, with others are more subtle. Hallelujah. So it goes deeper. One occultic reference is found in the Star Wars movies. May the force be with you. This phrase is what witches use to greet each other. 
the late David J. Myers, who was a former witch, said that, wrote, this is the oldest con game ever hatched out of hell. As a real witch, I learned about the two sides of the force. When real witches have sabbats and asbats and meet at a coven, they greet each other by saying, blessed be. When they part, they say, the force be with you. Both sides of this force are satanic. It is not a good side of the force that overcomes the bad side of the force, but rather it's the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach that destroys both sides, a uh, supposed side of the satanic forces. Second Corinthians 4 and 4, it says, In whom the Elohim of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel or Besorah of HaMashiach, who is the image of Yahuwah, should shine unto them. Romans 6 and 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You can also read the book of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, 10th verse, all the way to the 18th verse, dealing with the whole armor of the Most High Yah. How we need to keep that armor on when we get up and go out and about and doing our bidding throughout this world. As I told you, we are in a warfare. This is no joke. This is not a game. This thing is real. Now, I'm going to show you a meme here. It's coming up now. It tells you, Yahuwah is still in control of every situation. No need to panic. Don't worry. Don't fret about this stuff you're seeing because it has to happen. It was mentioned in the set apart scripture that it was going to happen. It, we're just in the end times. There's no way around about it. So, the warfare is real. That's why the set apart scripture says, Trust in Yah with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He'll direct your path. Keep trusting Yah. Keep depending on Yah. He's going to get you through this. Hallelujah. Now, here's that meme I was telling you about. A radical plan for the 20th century. Israel Cohen, he's a Jew. He's an imposter over in our land. We're not Jews. We are Hebrew Israelites. That's the name they gave themselves. We are Yehudi, or Israel, or Yashorel. Now look what he said. This is 1912. Listen, we must realize that our party's most powerful weapon is racial tension. What you see happening right now is 2024. By propounding into the consciousness of the dark races that for centuries they have been oppressed by the whites. We can mound them to the program of the Communist Party. What do you think happening right now? You think it's you think it's Republican or Democrat? It's a communism going on in there. In America, we will aim for the subtle victory while inflaming the Negro minority against the whites. We will endeavor to instill in the whites a guilt complex for their exploitation of the Negro. These people are all in cahoots together. Passed down from generation to generation. We will aid the Negroes to rise in prominence in every walk of life in the professions and in the world of sports and entertainment. Have you not seen it come to pass today? It's happening now. With this prestige, the Negro will be able to do what? Intermarry with the whites and begin a process which will deliver America to our cause. Now, this next meme that you're going to see coming up is going to blow you away. This dealing with the real story about the Wizard of Oz. When I saw this and I saw this writing that this gentleman had written about the Wizard of Oz, it was from Slider Joseph Johnny Bushwick. I'm going to read this and it's going to explain to you what this story was all about. And we were duped all of these years. That's what I'm telling you. Witchcraft is real. This thing blew me away. Now listen at this. The real story about the Wizard of Oz, in case you haven't seen the story behind the Wizard of Oz, we know the Wizard of Oz equals ounces of gold, the yellow brick roll equals bricks or gold ingot, means when you say yellow brick roll, that's talking about gold. You're going to be walking on the streets of gold, the gold dealing with man-made gold on the earth, becoming wealthy, walking on that gold road. But they give you that, it's almost like an American dream. You can walk on that road, but we're going to show you something about these characters. Listen at this. The straw man represents that fictional, all caps, legal fiction person. The straw man wanted a brain, but got a certificate, the birth certificate, for a new legal 
creation, and he was proud of his new legal status, plus all these other legalism he was granted. He thought he was doing something. He thought he was somebody special. He wanted a brain. But in, in, in fact, he ended up getting uh, a birth certificate, thinking he was somebody special. But on that birth certificate, you have letters on there that are in all capital letters, which represents that you are a business corporation. Remember, the government can only deal with a business person, not a real human being. So therefore, the straw man is a business. The straw man is a straw man. Has no power when it comes down to being a human because he's not a human. He's a straw man. Look at that. The tin man deals with T-I-N, the taxpayer identification number. A robotic avatar who worked tirelessly until his body literally froze up and stopped functioning. The heartless and emotionless robot creature who worked himself to death because he had no heart or soul he wanted a heart now notice this tin man is representing us as people we work we slave ourselves to the bone to get this on that yellow brick road we going down that road we trying to get stuff and we become heartless we become emotionless emotionless robots creatures we work so hard we work ourselves to death and we really was trying to get a have a real heart uh for mankind and for people and the things we did, but we became so tired, so dysfunctional because of all the things we were doing, and we were never meeting and reaching our goals. The cowardly lion was dealing with a bully, but was a true coward when someone stood up to him. He lacked true courage. That was uh, what he wanted, courage. At the end, the wizard gave him an official recognition award, dealing with authority and status you ever seen those people in place they really weak folks you say how in the heck they get that somebody gave them authority somebody gave them status but they were really weak didn't have no real power had no authority they were cowards and i've seen that a lot in leadership position the next one is the wizard of oz uses magic smoke flame and hologram what you're seeing happening right now we're talking about the magic one but all of it were tricks and illusions to push fear and compliance into doing what he commanded. What you see going on now. We got the Wizard of Oz acting out today in this world, in this society. The truth is the wizard have no real power and only uses illusions and create false power and authority. You see it today. The Wicked Witch pushed fear through intimidation. She was at the Toto. You're going to understand in a few minutes why she was at the Toto. She controlled the flying monkey police, the policy enforcers, what you see today. The mischievous demons, which also represent the Bar Association attorneys who attack and control all the little people for the great crown wizard, the crooked bankers of Oz dealing with gold. All right. And remember the poppy fields? They were not real humans. So drugs had no effect on them. But Dorothy was drugged. The Wizard of Oz was written at the time when the Rockefeller and pharmaceutical companies began to take over the medical and education. The drugging of America. That's what they're doing now. They're drugging us with pharmaceutical or pharmaceutical drugs. And that word pharmaceutical also deals with sorcery, dealing with that medicine. Instead of the real medicine, which is the, the fruit and the vegetables, they, they're giving us the seedless stuff. It has no power. They want to destroy us through giving us man-made drugs. Listen at this. The Crown was the largest drug dealer, and after their takeover of drug distribution in China, they began to expand all over the world. Toto the dog. This is why that witch was after that dog. Toto the dog was what the wicked witch was after. Toto in Latin means in total, all together. Toto was the one who exposed the Wizard of Oz. Toto had no fear and was very small compared to the great wizard. So no one noticed him. Toto pulled a curtain on the wizard and his magical schemes or scams. Curtain also uh, means the end of the act or scene. The end. He pulled the curtain and started barking until others paid attention and the red peel the others, caused others to wake up. The curtain veil that hides the corporate legal fiction and its false courts is exposed. The jig is up. No matter how small your bark is, it can be heard. Please don't forget the meaning behind the red shoes made from the skin of their innocent victims and satanic practices and red signifying blood. As I stated from Slaughter, Joseph, Johnny, 
Bushwick. That is powerful. Now, here's some more memes. I want you to look at this meme and look at the TikTok person's name and go there and watch his videos. This gentleman put up powerful videos out. You see the stars that are falling at the top. You see in the Paramount movies, those stars are falling. Those are 22 stars, which represents, guess what, y'all? The 22 fallen angels. They were coming down. So you see those stars going around Mount Hermon. That's the mountain they settled upon. Hallelujah. So you see that this thing goes deep. They put it right in your face. Check out the TikTok. Gentlemen, uh, is Z Lewis7770 on TikTok. Check it out, the different subliminal messages. Now, the logo of Paramount Pictures starts off with 22 stars falling and coming down to the mountain. The stars represent the watcher angels falling from heaven. And the mountain represents Mount Hermon, the mountain they landed on. Why 22 stars? 22 of the angels are named in the book of Enoch. As the conspirators of the pact they made on Mount Hermon to corrupt humanity and create abominations. I used to look at that for years. I'm telling you, I'm a numbers man. I count all the time. When I saw those stars, I used to count those stars all the time. I said, man, now this is what I used to say to myself. I was a young man in Christianity. And I said, boy, if somebody ever asked me how many numbers in the Paramount stars and say you're going to a million dollars, I know them. And I used to count 22 stars. I never know that the Most High had me reading that and looking at that, not knowing what was going to come later on in my life. Now, that's some deep stuff. Now, this next meme, listen, Mount Hermon, the domain of the watchers. This is where they live on that mountain. The Bible says a third of the angels fell from heaven. And where did they land on Mount Hermon, located at 33.3 north? The same longitude as a UFO incident at Roswell. Thus, the number 33 is connected to angels and also the 33rd degree dealing with the Masonic Lodge, aliens, and the fall of Lucifer. What more in Yahushua's day? Mount Hermon was dedicated to the Androgynous, the god Pan, which deals with panic attacks. The Pan God. He's a man, uh, half man and half uh, goat. And so walks on his feet. Dealing with like like that Baal, that uh, Baal God. Dealing with that goat, what they call Goat Lucy. The Pan symbolizes Satan and his master plan to control and corrupt mankind's DNA Via the mark of the beast. What you think they're doing now? Via all these different shots they're giving out. They messing with people's DNA. People ain't catching it. They ain't getting it. You notice now that everything is down. They said everybody that was uh, that had the shots, they're okay. And the people that didn't get the shots, they're okay. They wanted the same. See, people thought we were just talking about not taking it. They didn't realize the ramification of how serious this thing was. This is warfare, y'all. This ain't no joke. This ain't no game. This is real. Look, you see many Hebrews waking up all over the land. You got some of them on the borderline. They, they want to get up all the way, but they can't. But the deal is you have to allow y'all to work it, to get them to the place he wants them to be so they can serve him faithfully. Because if y'all don't wake them up, they ain't going to be awakened. So we have to allow y'all to work on the people. Plant the seed is our job and water the seed is our job. And y'all is going to give the increase. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I know. That it was a lot of information, but go back and listen to it again. You'll realize <laughs> that they put this stuff right in your face. They telling you what they're going to do. They had plans. Think about it, y'all, back in 1912, and it's manifesting today. Look, Shabbat Shalom. We love you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Shalom.